Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our top down shooter tutorial series. Okay, so now that we've got our player moving around in the world and he's able to look at various different things, we need to actually give him a weapon that he can fire in the game. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on the player here. Uh, we're going to go to game object, we're going to create a new 3D object, we're going to create a cube. Uh, I'm just going to move this up to here because we don't want them just kind of there like that. So obviously this is a bit big uh, for our purposes, so I'm going to move this now in a second, just kind of line ourselves up. Okay, so I'm going to go to scale here. We're going to scale it down a whole bunch here like this. Then I'm going to stretch it out, basically just so we have a little object that looks uh, kind of roughly like a gun. Um, obviously it's a bit hard to see because it's white and it's kind of disappearing here so we're going to go to our materials folder we're going to create a new uh, material that we'll call gun and the color we're going to make it kind of grayish and we'll make it super metallic as well not that it's going to make too much difference with our square block but that's okay and we want to click that and drop that on our gun here and so we know that our player is moving and rotating within the world uh, to face different directions. So, but just so you know which way is kind of the default uh, kind of face forward. So the face forward for this object where you're starting off is actually, uh, in terms of where the camera currently is, it's basically behind the player. So if he's the player's looking up like this, that's kind of the default way of facing forward. So what we can do is get our cube here. We'll actually create a new empty object that we'll call our gun. We're going to make the cube a child of that, and we're going to make the gun a child of the player. We should actually make sure we want our cube to be in the dead center of this new gun object. So that just dropped down there. So we'll just drag it back up here. And I'm going to put this gun so it's kind of just inside the player's body here, like this. And as you can see, now it's facing up like that. And now that it's a child of the player, if we are to hit play, we should see that spin around and point in different directions. So there you go. Now you can now you can nice and easily tell which way is the player facing in the world. Okay. So now that we have that, obviously if we've got a gun, we're going to need to make it fire some bullets. So we're going to create a new tree object, a new cube. Again, I'm going to drag that up to kind of just here. We're going to scale that down like this. So make it we're going to make it obviously smaller than the gun itself so in terms of size that should be okay oh we clicked on the object there uh, okay we're, we're kind of messing with our view a little bit but that's okay so it's small a little bit smaller obviously again we don't want it to be white so we're going to create a new material again that we'll call our bullet material and we're going to make this kind of red to make it stand out like that Okay, so we'll drag our bullet there. Okay, so we got our bullets in position. We're gonna rename this to be a bullet. Now, obviously, we're gonna want this to fire a whole load uh, out of the gun. So we're gonna make this a prefab object. So back in our assets folder, we're gonna create a new folder that we'll call prefabs. And into that, we're gonna drag our bullets there so now we have a bullet and anytime we want to fire a bullet from the gun basically we're going to call this bullet and pop it into the world okay so we have our bullet but obviously as a bullet it needs to be able to fire forward so uh, we're going to need to create a new script um, a new C sharp script that we're going to call our bullet controller now obviously we're going to want to be able to control um, our gun as well, but we're going to create a nice simple script for our bullet controller that will basically just make it fly forward in the world so we don't have to worry about uh, anything else too much with this bullet. So we're going to double click on this and open it up here. Okay, so obviously our bullet needs uh, a speed to move, so we're going to say um, public float move speed. Actually, no, we'll just call it just call it speed, keep it nice and simple. And then basically in our update loop, basically all we want to do is tell the bullet to go forwards. So whichever way the bullet is facing, so we're gonna make it face a different direction based off which way which way it's coming out of the player's gun. So whichever way it's facing, just go forward 
at our speed here. So we're going to say transform dot translate. Nope, not transform dot transform. Transform dot translate. And basically, tran transform dot translate just basically um, tells the object to go to a new position. So as it says, move the transform into the direction and distance of the translation. So we want a new vector tree in here, and the vector tree we want to use, make it use is just vector tree dot forward. And to make sure that we are like moving uh, based on our speed, we want to multiply that by our speed. And of course, because we're doing this in update, as we know, our update can variably transform. It can be different lengths at different times. We want to multiply this by our time dot delta time like that okay so we're going to save this pop back in here we're going to apply that script to our bullet itself we just let that compile in the corner down there and then we're going to add the bullets bullet controller here we're just going to give this a kind of default speed of five we're actually going to change that based on our individual gun in the world because we want to also have the player have the ability to pick up different guns as they're going around. So we want we might want our bullets to be able to go at different speeds and things like that. So our speed currently is five. So if we hit play, we should see this bullet go whoop off up that way. So there you go. We saw this bullet kind of fly off. It was a bit kind of framey because we just started the game, but it won't. That'll it'll look a lot better when we have a few of them going. Okay, so we have our bullet working just fine. And now that we add that script, we want to apply that change there like that. And the next thing we want to do is control actually firing our gun. So we're going to create a new script, new C sharp script that we're going to call our gun controller. And we're going to open that up in monodevelop2 and we're actually just before we go into there we'll apply this script to our gun itself here so we're going to on the gun object we're going to add our gun controller script and before we go we will we're going to need a point for our bullets to fire out of this weapon so what we're going to do is on our gun we're going to right click here we're going to create a new empty object and we're going to click and drag it. We're just going to drag it so it's out in front of the gun itself rather than inside the gun. We want it to be outside the gun here. Like that. So then we have our bullets kind of, this will be the point where our bullets will appear from our gun. Okay. So in our gun controller, basically what we want to have is our gun can have be basically in two different states. It can either be currently firing a weapon or not firing. So to control that, we're going to have a public bool that we will call is firing obviously we need to know what we're going to be firing out of our gun so we're going to have a public game object um, bullet actually no we're not going to use the game object sorry what we're going to use is public bullet controller and we'll call it bullet because we know that the object that we're going to be creating is going to be of type bullet controller and we're going to want to be actually able to make some adjustments to that so we're going to, going to be able to control how fast the bullets are coming out as I said if we have different guns we want to be able to use this controller to control uh, bullets firing out at different speeds and things like that so as I said we're going to need to add a public float for our bullet speed so that'll be how fast our bullets are coming out the next thing we want to know is how um, quickly we can uh, go between shots. So how fast, so say if we have um, kind of a pistol, we don't want it to be shooting like crazy, but if we want to have a machine gun, we want to be able to fire a load of shots really, really quickly. So we're going to add a float here, so a public float that we're going to call time between shots. So basically what we're going to do is tick down uh, every time we fire a bullet we'll set our we'll set um another value which, which actually we'll add this here private float um shot counter we'll call it so basically what we're going to do is every time we fire a bullet we'll set our time between shots to be equal to our shot counter we'll make that count down and once it gets down to zero we'll be able to fire another bullet and we'll reset it back up to be time between shots again so over and over and over basically as long as our firing is we're as long as we're firing a bullet we want it to be counting down continuously as we go 
Um, and of course, one other thing we need is, as I said, we created this little position within the world for where we want to fire our bullets from. So we need a reference to that. So this will be a public transform for fire point, we'll call it. So that will be where we fire our bullets from. Okay, so we don't need to worry about the start function, but in our update loop, as I said, we have our two states. We can be either firing or not firing. So if we are firing, we want to be doing a bunch of stuff. So we're going to say if is firing is true, then we're going to put some stuff in between the brackets here. Okay, so if we are firing, then we know, okay, our shot counter should be counting down the whole time. So shot counter, oops, if I could, shot, I'm having trouble here apparently, shot counter minus equals time dot delta time. So that'll make sure that our shot counter is counting down the whole time. And if our shot counter is less than or equal to zero, so basically if we've gone below zero on our shot counter, what we want to do is say, okay, if that's true, then we want to fire our bullet. And we'll also want to reset our counter. So we will say, if that's true, then shot counter now should be equal to our time oops, time between shots. So it's back up to being a full value. Um, and as I said, we want to create a new bullet within the world. So how we would normally do that is just say instantiate. Um, we will need to tell it what we want it inst what we want it to instantiate. So that'll be our bullet. So instantiate a bullet. We need to tell it where to appear in the world. So that'll be at our fire point dot position. And then we need to tell it what rotation to have within the world. And that will also be on our fire point, but it'll be our fire point dot rotation. So that'd be fine. That will create our bullet in the world. But when we do this, we also want to apply our bullet speed to our bullet. So to do that, what we have to do is before instantiate here, what we want to add, uh, we're basically creating a new bullet uh, controller object here that we'll call, we'll just call it new bullet. And we'll say that's equal to uh, instantiate our bullet and all that stuff. But before our semicolon, we want to say we're instantiating this. So instantiate would normally create it as a game object in the world, but we want to instantiate it as a bullet controller object. So that way, this bullet controller here, oh, that should be a capital B. So that way, um, this new bullet object will have all the properties uh, of a bullet controller just the way we want it to. So then what we can do is say, okay, on this new bullet, we want to set the new bullet dot speed. So the speed of new bullet should be equal to uh, whatever bullet speed value we have up here. So new bullet dot speed is equal to bullet speed, just like that. Um, and that's kind of, that's basically all we want to happen when we're firing. So what'll happen is it'll check the, the shot counter. If it goes below zero, it'll fire a bullet, set the counter back up to our full value. So say we have this at 0.5 of a second. So set it back up to 0.5 and it'll tick down to zero again, as long as is firing is true. So what happens when is firing is false? Well, basically we don't want it to fire anymore. So we can add an else statement here. So it won't, it won't be uh, doing any of this instantiating again, but what we wanted to do in this situation is make sure our shot counter is set back to be zero. And the reason for that is because obviously whenever we first start firing again, straight away, we want to be able to fire a bullet out of our machine. Okay, or out of our gun, sorry. Uh, so we'll save that. Now, the only thing we're missing at the moment is how to actually fire the bullets. Because at the moment we have all the script set up, but we're not actually doing anything. So to fire our bullets, we're going to jump back into our player controller script. Now, obviously, we're going to need a reference to our gun in the game. So right here, we're going to say public uh, public uh, gun controller, and we'll just call this the gun. So we have our gun controller, and what we want to do is um. After we've done all this stuff, we don't need to worry about interrupting any of that. Basically, all we want to do is say, if we're getting input 
from the we want to basically check if we're left clicking with the mouse so the way we check that is a input dot get mouse button down zero and the reason we say zero zero is basically a reference to the left click I think one is right click and two is clicking down the middle mouse button or the scroll wheel as it kind of is not normally these days um, basically what we want to do is, is if we are detecting that the player is clicking down on the left uh, mouse button we want to set on our gun on the gun we want to say the gun that is firing is equal to true so we know that we're setting that to be true and basically the next thing we want to do is whenever our player lets go of the mouse button so if input dot get mouse button up and again mouse button up zero because we're doing the left click so basically if we detect the player letting go of it then on our gun we want to say is firing is equal to false okay so we'll save that and now we'll go back into the game and we need to hook up everything that we just created in the world okay so we we know we set our bullets to be a prefab so we can actually delete this bullet from the world here we don't not need that in the game anymore so on our gun object we've not set up at the moment but we just if we drag our bullet here from our prefabs folder we're going to drop that into there our bullet speed will set that to be five by default but we'll make some changes uh, in a minute or two we're going to set our time between shots to be 0.1 of a second i think is okay for the moment and then we need to set our our fire position which is our game object here we're going to click and drag that into there so now we know where our bullets were fired out of and then finally on our player we need to make sure that that gun is popped into this slot here so our gun we're going to click and drag it into there and now if we hit play we should see our gun in action so we can move around and if we hold click there we go we see our bullets firing out just the way we want them to so let's uh, try some different values now so if we click back on our gun here and um, our bullet speed let's increase that a bit and we'll put our time between shots down to 0.02 there we go now we see oh we got loads of shots happening in our game so as you can see we is it kind of feels a bit nice now we can spin around like crazy we're firing a lot of bullets um but there you go that's how to set up our, our gun in our game and the bullets fly off into the distance and do some damage along the way hopefully okay so there you go thanks for watching this episode i will be back soon with some more top down shooter tutorial goodness Thanks for watching this episode and if you want to learn more about developing your own games you can follow the link on screen to my complete 2D platformer game development course on Udemy where you will learn how to program and build a complete game in Unity 2D with multiple levels, enemies and unique boss battles. So click the link on screen or in the description below and get the course today.